there, welcome. Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY crafts coming your way. I also have a sweet friend who is joining me. What was I gonna say? Never mind. Mix that one. Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY crafts coming your way. I also have a sweet friend who's gonna be joining me and I'll explain those details a little bit later. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on some easy DIY 4th of July Pinterest inspired fabric crafts. So let's get started with project number one. To start out this project, I've got two pieces of fabric cut at 18 by 18. This is cream colored fabric. It's 100% cotton from uh, Walmart, easy. And then some of this homespun fabric as well as this homespun fabric, both from Hobby Lobby. We'll be using a lot of the same fabrics today to make it easy. So out of the blue star fabric, we need a seven and a half wide by six inches tall. So I'm gonna use my ruler here and just figure out, of course, my length at seven and a half, make a little snip, and we're going to rip our fabric. Now, all our crafts today, we're just ripping our fabric. It's going to be wonderful. So rip it down at that seven and a half inch length, of course, and then I'm going to turn it around so I can get my height here, six inch mark. I'll have all the measurements listed down below in the description box for you, and I'm going to rip that piece out. Okay, there we go. Got our first piece ready to go. Next, we're going to rip five pieces of red fabric for our red stripes. We're not going to worry about the white stripes because the pillow is going to kind of simulate that for us. So we're going to rip them all at one and a half inches in width, but two of them are going to be ripped at seven inches in length, and three of them will be ripped at 14 and a half inches in length. And again, all of this will be in the description box for you. So first thing I'm doing is just worrying about the width. I'm making a little snip at the one and a half inch mark you know, on my ruler and then ripping it down. And I will do five that way. And yes, we'll have extra, but we're going to use, you know, whatever we have extra on upcoming project anyways, because any of the stripes and stuff that we're ripping in fabric today will all be at the one and a half inch in width to make it easier for us. Getting this last one ripped down here. And then we'll go ahead and start on our first at seven inches in length. I just ripped a piece. I'm going to measure it just a little bit uh, long here. So I'm going to, you know, make a cut and rip up that little bit of extra. And then we'll get our second one. I'll use the first one to measure our second one and get that length. I know there's lots of little strings and stuff to deal with, but, you know, I'm going to leave them on there because that makes the fun of this, you know, kind of Americana distress decor here. And then getting my three longest ones ripped. Now you're going to take all your ripped pieces and you're going to lay your flag out in the center of the pillow. And I've got about one and a half inches of space in between the stripes. And then I've got it centered in the pillow so that there is a two inch wide width going all the way around the border of the design. So I'm just kind of checking with my ruler here, right, left, top, bottom, I've got a two inch border. I'm gonna use, if you're a gluer, you can use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue for this and go ahead and just glue all your pieces down, okay? And then wait for me to come back. <laughs> I like to sew and I want that subtle look of a sewing on here. And I debated whether I just wanted to glue it or add the sewing because either one is going to look cute. But I decided to go ahead and add that little subtle look of sewing. So I'm just pinning down all my pieces onto one piece of the fabric. You don't want to pin, you know, and make sure when you take the sewing machine, you're only sewing one piece of fabric. Don't sew both of them together yet, of course. Um, and then here I'm just going to show a little bit of kind of sewing around the stars here and our stripes. And I'm using a white thread so that it shows up nicely here. We'll finish up a little bit on our stripe, just giving you a little bit of that look. And then, of course, I'll show you what it looks like. Again, it's just nice and subtle. And again, if you're not a sewer, don't sew it. It'll look cute just glued, I promise you. All right, so here's what that looks like. See, just a nice little soft settle. Perfect. So now if you've glued or sewed, let's finish up our pillow here. So lay your bottom piece of fabric down and your top piece, normally we'd flip it over and then, you know, sew around or glue around the edges and turn it right side out. But our strips are all ripped in distress. So I want the outer perimeter of the pillow to be out. And so it is all ripped and distressed as well. So if you're a gluer, you're going to come up the left edge 
all the way up and gluing across the top, down the right side, and across the bottom, leaving about a six inch opening there for stuffing, okay? If you're a sewer, of course, go ahead and pin your two pieces together, again, right sides out so that we have those distress edges around the pillow out and exposed for the whole world to see, and then go ahead and sew around all your edges, leaving that six inch opening or so at the bottom of your pillow open so, of course, that we can stuff our pillow. Once we've got our pillow sewn, all of us gluers and sewers are now on the same page and it's time to stuff our pillows. Now for stuffing, I always buy the Walmart brand pillows. I think it's for like the full queen size. It runs under $4. You could stuff three big pillows with that. It's so much more uh, cost effective than going into craft section at say like Hobby Lobby or Joann's and Michael's and buying the same thing. Okay, so stuff it as full as you want it. And then before I close it, I'm going to come along the edges on the pillow here. I'm going to pull on those strings so I can further distress around the edges to go with our distressing of our stars and stripes in the center of our pillow. Once that's done, if you're a sewer, you can go ahead, or a gluer, you can go ahead and glue your opening closed. And if you're a sewer, you can go ahead and sew your opening closed. And with all that said, that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number two. So for this project, I picked up a cute little dish and kind of a flat looking bowl at a thrift store. You can get any kind of little dish or bowls, two size bowls at like Dollar Tree if you want. We're just going to make a little, you know, holder. All right. So first thing I'm going to do, I want to take my little bowl. I'm going to use this Beacon Quick Grip Permanent Adhesive and I'm going to glue my little dish to the bottom of my bigger bowl. So two size bowls would work perfectly. One small bowl, one big bowl if you're shopping at Dollar Tree. This is what it looks like all glued. Now you could use like textured spray paint if you want. I didn't have the right color, so I'm gonna use some of this sand from Dollar Tree, Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint, and Dixie Bell Chalk Paint in the color Drop Cloth. I wanna mix the two together. The white was too white, and then the drop cloth paint was too cream. So I'm just mixing the two together to give me a lighter color cream, so to speak. I'm gonna pour just a little bit of sand into it. Dollar Tree sand is really thick uh, grain sand. So I'm just pouring a little bit into it. I'm gonna use a pouncy brush here. And uh, along the whole bowl, outer edges and everything, I'm gonna pounce our little sand paint mixture onto the bowl. Now, if you add too much sand, it's going to look really thick and chunky. So I would start out with lesser sand. And if you're finding the texture isn't as thick as you want it, then you can add a little more as you go. And this is what it looks like. The pouncing is going to give it a little texture. And then, of course, the sand is going to give it a little bit of texture. Just like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to use a smaller pouncy brush to kind of get along the bottom and then around the base of that little smaller bowl. Again, this is what it looks like. Let that dry, and here is how it looks when it's all done. I love that kind of little dessert bowl at the bottom. A little fluted edge gives it a little something. And then in the center, I didn't, I didn't add as much texture there. I split a bowl of paint to the side, and then I used the pouncy brush with regular paint on the inside, and then I came back in with some of that texture paint just in areas, because like I said, I just didn't want too much texture on the inside. All right, now we're going to work on our little decorative balls. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby last year for 24 cents, but normal price, 99 cents, paper mache balls. You could, of course, at Dollar Tree, pick up like the styrofoam balls if you want. I'm going to use some fabric for one. I'm going to use some ribbon for another. Both of these came from Hobby Lobby. 
And then I am going, and it's five yards on the ribbon. You're probably going to need about six. And then I'm going to use some of this crochet trim at Dollar Tree, and you'll need at least two spools of it. Now for the fabric strips, I'm just cutting them a half inch wide. The fabric, I've just got folded in half, but if it was unfolded, it's about 45 inches long. I'm cutting four of them, okay? Now, you could choose to do your decorative balls all in fabric, all in ribbon, all however you want to do it, but I thought the texture of the different types of things I'm using would look nice together. You can use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue gun. I'm going to go with the hot glue gun. I'm going to start by placing a dab of hot glue, attaching my fabric and I'm going to wrap it around across from that. I'm going to cut that off when I meet that center again and little hot glue. Then I'm going to come around the other direction of that little hot glue, wrap it around, cut off the excess, glue that piece in, and then I'm going to come in between our little plus sign here, so to speak, and I'm going to do the same thing, adding a little hot glue, wrapping it around, cutting off the excess, attaching that strip, come around the other direction, add a little hot glue, wrap it around, cut off that excess and glue. Now that we've got our four kind of initial pieces in place, we can start by gluing one long piece of fabric and wrapping it around continuously around the ball, filling in those little spaces that don't have fabric. Okay, and to make sure you stop to glue at kind of your glue point there. And when I'm stopping to glue, I'm not always gluing directly in the center of the ball. I'm kind of maybe gluing to the side a little bit just so that that part of the ball doesn't get like a point on it from all the different glue spots, if you know what I mean. So just keep continuously wrapping, filling in the spaces. See, I'm gluing a little bit to the side there. Otherwise, it's going to get really tall with that same glued spot in the center. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. We don't want like a pointy ball if we can help it. Once we get to the end, glue that end piece on, cut off the excess, and you have one cute kind of fabric wrapped ball with all the little threads hanging off. Now, the next ball I'm going to do is crochet, and I decide I want to come in and use a little bit of that paint from our bowl with the paint that doesn't have the sand in it and kind of paint that in case any of the ball shows. And I'm doing the same exact thing as the fabric ball. I'm starting out with my four initial strips, cutting them off, and then I'm going to come in and fill in those spaces with the crochet thread. Now you could actually make this as thick as you want or a little sparser if you want. I think some places I actually kind of wrapped over twice. You know, it doesn't matter just however you want to wrap. And we're going to finish this one up. Now we're going to move into the next ball and I actually wrapped this one differently to give you some different options. And I also did it so it kind of gives us different textures with all our decorative balls. So for this one, what we're going to do, we're going to start out hot glue one spot and start wrapping our ribbon. Now when we come to meet that center, we're going to come around right next to where we glued and we're going to crisscross at the opposite end as you can see here. Okay, then we're going to keep wrapping around and we're going to crisscross right where we first glued. And every time that we wrap, we're meeting the edges of our ribbon so that no ball shows. We'll add a little bit of glue at both opposite ends of our balls where we're crisscrossing, right? And this technique is actually, it would be harder if you have wider ribbon. But this ribbon is about a quarter inch wide, which allows us to do that. But if you have wider ribbon, it's not going to lay right and you're going to have more gaps. So I think that this type of process is better with the thinner ribbon. Where the other ones, we had them thicker. This is probably about a quarter inch wide ribbon. Where our other decorative balls, I mean, we had half inch wide and maybe even a little wider with the uh, crochet trim. So it would be hard to do this. We don't get as gaps. So that's why we kind of did those a little bit differently as well. All right. So you just continue this process crisscrossing on two opposite ends of the ball, making sure that as you wrap your ribbon around, you're uh, kind of gluing in, you know, spots to keep it attached and that you're meeting along the edges of the previous ribbon that you're wrapping around. So I hope that makes sense. You're going to run out of ribbon, so just cut that off. Add your new spool in where you cut off that first ribbon. Wrap around till you're done and got everything covered. Cut that off 
And then of course, add your little bit of glue and that makes this decorative ball complete. You can see how much different it looks from the other two, but I think they all look wonderful and I love the different textures. And then that makes this project complete. So today I'm happy to let you know that I am joining in with my sweet friend Tracy who is Country Charmed by Tracy here on YouTube bringing you tons of DIY patriotic inspiration for your home decor. Now Tracy's channel is filled with country rustic goodness. I wouldn't think that any of you aren't familiar with Tracy's channel but if not she does tons of DIYs that are detailed with all that country beauty. Tracy's videos are uplifting and she's so encouraging to lead you into how to do all these wonderful country crafts. She's sweet and charming and for that alone I love her. We do similar crafts and I think that's why we came together naturally as friends and we love collaborating which we do you know quite a few times a year and I don't think any of you are disappointed when we come together to bring you lots of DIY inspiration. I am blessed to know her and I of course will have her channel and video link down in my description box below. So if you aren't subscribed to her, make sure you head on over, check out her video, hit that subscribe button, let her know I sent you. You will not be disappointed. With that said, let's move on to project number three. For this project, we're going to use our same fabric we used in our pillow project number one. We're going to rip one piece of blue fabric at eight and a half inches long by eight inches tall. We're going to rip seven red fabric strips here, okay? Three of them we're gonna rip at 14 and a half inches long by one and a half inches wide. Did the same process for the pillow, right? And then four of them we're gonna rip at 22 inches long by one and a half inches wide, okay? Now, for our white stripes, you can use you're going to need six ribbons or crochet trims. You can have them all the same design. You can have them different designs. Here's just a couple of different ones that I'm going to be using. Now, these two trims are actually a little bit thinner, so I'm going to glue them together, and then I think it's going to give it some great texture as well. So you're going to cut three trims at 22 inches in length, however thick or thin they are in width, and then you're going to cut three trims at 14 and a half inches in length because we want them the same length as our length of our strips, right? Now, you can see some of my ribbons are white and some of them are cream, but that's okay because we're going to distress all our fabric and get them all to be about the same color anyway. If you don't want to do any distressing, I would suggest picking trims that are all the same color, okay? I'm going to use some instant coffee and some water here. I'm going to mix it together. I've got a little and use a, a spray bottle I got from Dollar Tree, they have craft funnels from Dollar Tree as well. It's going to help me to get my instant coffee into my spray bottle. And that instant coffee came from Dollar Tree. Water came from my tap. <laughs> I've got a piece of just scrap fabric down here so I can, you know, mix up a little bit of coffee here at first, spray it on, see if it's dark as I want. If it's not as dark, I'll add a little bit more coffee, you know, easy peasy. So I add coffee into the bottle, add a little water, put the top on, mix it up just like that. And the water's warm, so it'll melt the coffee. I think it's going to be a little light. And as I spray here, I can see it's a little light. Doesn't quite match the color of my cream trims I'm using. So I'll just come in, like I said, add a little bit more coffee, mix it up. And then I will spray another scrap piece once it gets to the darkness I want, this is looking a little bit better. Let me test it. Perfect. That'll work. We're going to go with it. I've got all my strips of fabric lined on some, this is some 
painting paper. It's got a plastic backing on the back and I'm going to spray it with my mixture. Now you could have a bowl of this mixture and dip your fabric into it, but then when you come out, you got to like scrunch it all up, right? And then it's going to be wrinkly. So when it dries, you got to iron it. I'm trying to avoid that step little bit lazy. So I am spraying it on. So then once I spray it on, I can just kind of smooth out those fabric edges. I laid this outside to dry in the sun for about half an hour. It was ready to go. I didn't have to iron it. It was perfect. So you can even see here, I'll show you when I'm done here, because here I know it's a little bit hard to tell, especially on our little blue star fabric, you'll be able to see the difference. Uh, of the before and after of the fabric. Now I'm coming in, I'm spraying my uh, white trims and I will have to spray these a few times to get them to the color I want. And also, except for the blue fabric, cause it's kind of one-sided, the red and the trims I will spray front and back. Now I'm gonna use a long paint stick. You could use a long dowel here. And I'm just going to use my miter box and saw here. I'm cutting it right before the curve of that paint stick, which is about 17 and a half inches in length. But I think in retrospect, I would have liked it somewhere 18 to 19 inches in length better. Now, here's the before and after of our little plaid fabric. You can see how much darker the, the white of the plaid fabric got. And on the stars, you can see the little bit of difference here as well. And then you can also see on the trims, the top is the regular cream color. The bottom is what we did the little staining on. So it looks pretty good. So here we are. I want to sew around my fabric pieces. Again, because I'm a sewer, you do not have to do this if you're not a sewer. It will look perfectly wonderful without. But again, like I did on the pillow, I wanted to add that little bit of subtle texture with my sewing machine. So those of you who aren't sewers, wait till I'm done sewing here, okay? But again, you don't have to do this. Again, I almost didn't do it. Just like on the pillow, I went back and forth whether I wanted to or not. But in the end, I just kind of like that little bit of that thread texture on here. So I'm just gonna, you know, sh show a little bit of the sewing here and then we'll move on to, you know, kind of assembling our flag. I love all these ideas I found on Pinterest. I just, I love the the kind of primitive rustic look of them, um, the Americana look to them. So I hope you're all enjoying these projects. Get this little bit more sewn here and I'll kind of show you up close the little bit of that subtle texture. See, here's what it looks like. And I use like a dark brown on this. I thought it showed up better than white on this fabric. Okay, so... We're all together now. I'm going to use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue for this. You could use a hot glue gun, of course. And first thing I'm going to do here is my two little thin pieces, that little ball fabric and my little heart fab or heart trim. I think I got this heart trim at Joann's years ago. And then, of course, the little ball trim came from Hobby Lobby. Gluing the two together so it's a little bit wider. It doesn't really matter the width of your trims you're using um, because you can overlap them a bit, which you'll see we're going to do on some of them. So now I have things laid out how I want them now, where I'm going to put what trims where in between our fabric strips. And we're going to start with our star fabric and we're going to attach our shorter pieces of plaid fabric and our shorter pieces of ribbon. I'm going to just glue one piece of fabric here, one piece to the star first. I'm going to lay a longer strip at the top so I can measure as I glue the two pieces together that my strip and star fabric is going to end up the same length as my longer strip of fabric. So I hope that makes sense. And then I'm just going to start laying my other pieces down, alternating fabric and lace or trim so that I am even at the right edge, okay? and that I end up with a piece of trim at the bottom of that star fabric, all right? Once I do that, I'm gonna add glue onto the right edge of that star fabric, and I'm gonna lay it down over my alternated pieces of fabric and trim. Again, ending with a trim piece at the bottom edge of that star fabric, and everything's all aligned at the right end, okay? Gonna set that aside for a minute. 
Now, before we continue on, I wasn't going to stain, but I decided I wanted to take my paint stick using Waverly Antique Wax mixed with some water, and I'm going to stain it. I thought that would look better with the distressed of the, the fabrics and the trims we're using. And I just stain it really lightly, and once it's dry, I'll take it outside, and I'll distress it and sand it with my electric sander to make it even lighter, and this is what it looks like. I'm going to place that at the left edge of my flag, and I'm going to use this macrame... Uh, string from Dollar Tree as well. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I have enough room to wrap that macrame string around at least twice at the end, which measures about a quarter inch. So I want to make sure I leave a quarter inch at each edge of that paint stick open to wrap that macrame cord around. And here's where I thought it probably would have looked better if I had a little bit more longer paint stick or dowel. So what I want to do now, I've marked that quarter inch. And so I want to make sure that I, leaving that edge open, I go ahead and glue down my star fabric ensemble. And I'm also leaving about probably an eighth of an inch at that top of that paint stick you see there as well open. Now I'm going to come in with the one first long strip of our plaid. I'm going to glue it down onto the paint stick right next to that star stripe. And then I'm also going to glue it along just on the star fabric, just along the edge of that star fabric. And then I'm going to leave the bottom half of that plaid fabric hanging loose. Okay, now I'm going to kind of lay my other pieces down, making sure I've got them enough room here to leave that quarter inch opening on that left edge. Okay, overlapping some trim and fabric if I need to, which I will have to. And I'll go ahead and start at the left edge, just my way my brain's working, and I'll glue down that last fabric piece there. And then I will kind of come back into the center gluing in the trims and the fabric pieces just kind of by gluing that first long strip of fabric and that last bit of long strip of fabric you know it gives me kind of that parameter of how much space I need to cover in the center so from there I'm just alternating fabric strips and trims and getting those glued down okay so I hope that makes sense it's probably easier to watch then I'm going to come in starting on the back Laying down my macrame cord, the cut edge at the bottom of that paint board there, or paint stick, I'm going to wrap it around the edge. Then I'm going to come around inward to the other side, so I do a double wrap. Just like this, and then coming around. That way I end up at the back. And then I'm going to glue that piece there at a slant. So when I hang it, it'll... I have it'll be glued in the right spot to be able to hang up at a point in the center of the flag so I hope that's understandable gluing it a slant once that's dry I can see where it's going to hang at a point and then I can come down here and mark how it's going to lay slanted on my board okay and then once that's set up I'm going to come around and wrap twice one and two and then I know how much because I'll have extra thread. And I'm going to kind of glue the ends of that extra thread so it doesn't unravel. And then I'll glue the remaining piece around twice that right edge of that paint stick. And then that makes this project complete. Let's move on to our last project, number four. So for this project, we're going to come back with that star fabric from Hobby Lobby. 
I've got this kind of red and cream stripe fabric also from Hobby Lobby. And I'm using this, you know, cotton fabric we used on our pillow in project number one. Now, in hindsight, it's a little thick to work with. I would probably go with like a muslin type fabric. OK, it's going to be a lot easier to manipulate with what we're doing. So my star fabric, I want it to be the same color as my red and cream stripe fabric. So I'll be using the little instant coffee mixture here pretty soon. Now, all our strips are going to be that one and a half inch wide as we've been doing by 15 inches long. Okay. And I've got most all my fabric ripped, my blue uh, star materials ripped here and my cream fabric materials ripped here. I'll get you the lengths here in just a little bit. So I just have that little bit of you know, strips I need to rip on our stripe material. So I'm using a leftover piece of the plaid to determine my width nice and easy, making a little snip, and then I'll rip that fabric down. I think I ripped two strips. And then I'll use one of my other uh, pieces already ripped to determine my length, make a little snip and rip that. All right. Perfect. And then once we get all of those ripped, we're going to come in here with our blue star material. And I'm going to spray again with the instant coffee to darken that up a little bit. Again, I just do one side, let it sit outside for about half an hour and it's ready to go. But it really does a nice job of just kind of, you know, toning down the brightness of those white stars. Nice, easy way to do it. And of course, if your fabric is more of a white tone base, then, you know, you skip this part. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to show it and it gives it that nice kind of distressed Americana look. All right. So for the next part, when you've got all your strips ripped, you should end up with 12 strips of blue, 12 strips of white and 14 strips of red. I'm going to use this macrame cord again and I'm going to use 48 inches. All right. You should have with this cord, you're going to be have 10 inches at each end of the cord for loops with about 28 inches left in the middle for all our fabric pieces. Now what I want to do is fold our cord in half and find the center and I want to figure out which fabric piece is going to be at that center of that macrame cording. So I hope this is all understandable. Again we have 12 blue ties, 12 white ties, and 14 red ties which is 38 ties total. Okay. 38 divided by 2 is 19 because the center of our garland is at the 19th tie, okay? So what I've done is made two little marks for each of the ties with 38 marks total. And the reason it's done in two ties is because the right half of our garland alternates two white ties, two red ties, two white ties, two red ties. So 12 blue ties is going to be at the left edge of our garland. We want it to look like a flag, right? So I'm going to count down to 12 ties and I'm going to mark that off. All right. So this section is all 12 blue ties. Then once we go beyond that mark to the right side, we're alternating red and white. Every two ties, red and white. So I want to count my lines here till I reach the 19th tie. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. This is the 19th tie. And we're alternating. So the first two ties are red. The second two ties are white. Third two ties are red. Four two ties are white. And so on all the way down to the end of our flag garland. And so now I know at the 19th tie, which is the center of our garland, we need two white strips. Hope that's all understandable. That was the easiest way I can do it. I'm going to show you an example here of how we're tying our ties. This is just a piece of tie with a little tag here. We're going to do it, you know, we're going to fold it in half. We're going to put the center through the hole. We're going to pull it out. And so now we have a little loop. This is our fabric strip, so to speak. Our two loose ends, we're going to come up over around that tag and pull it through just like that. Okay. That's how our fabric piece is going to look. So I've marked the center of our macrame twine with a little Sharpie marker. I'm starting with the white strip because that's what we indicated was going to be at the center of our garland. We're folding it in half. All right. The folded edge is going to come down underneath that macrame twine, okay? Just kind of like we did on that little shipping tag. The two ends are going to come over the twine, down through that loop, and then it's going to be easiest if you grab the macrame twine on both sides and then pull the two edges of your fabric downward. 
And then you can just grab your macrame twine and pull it outward again so it's nice and straight. Again, we're going to take our fabric, fold it in half, loop underneath the macrame twine, your loose ends of fabric up over the macrame twine, down through the loop, and then pull your macrame cord. We'll do this a couple more times. All right, we've got two white ones. Now we're going to go with two red. Fold it in half, loop underneath the cord, two hanging ends over the cord, down through the loop, Grab your macrame twine, pull down on the loose ends of the fabric, and then pull your twine apart so it straightens your twine back out. Fold, loop underneath the twine, two edges up over the twine, down through the loop. Grab your twine, pull down on your edges, and then pull your twine out so it straightens it up again. Now, I've done a few this way. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to do to the left side. I'm going to do these red and white pieces off camera and we're going to get over here to the blue ties. Okay. And I wanted to show you this on the blue ties because this blue fabric's kind of one sided. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure I show you this part. See one sided. So make sure when you fold your fabric in half and you bring your loop underneath that macrame cord, your two ends make sure that the good side is facing upward as you pull it through so we'll do it again make sure your bright side is upward as you pull it through the loop okay and then grab your twine pull down on your edges to close that and then straighten out your twine so i hope that's understandable that way your bright nice side of the fabric is hanging forward and your yucky side is hanging backwards so that's why I wanted to show you that. So all that's done, and we have about 10 inches here on this left side. So I'm kind of finishing up this right side. I've alternated the red and white a little bit, you know, off camera here. I've got about four more strips here. And again, I can't preface enough. This fabric was so thick, it was a little hard to work with. So muslin fabric, the thinner the fabric is going to be lots easier to work with. So our last bit of fabric, again, your loop is underneath the twine. Your two free ends are going to come up over your twine, down through that loop, pull, and then pull your twine out so it is nice and straight underneath. Going to go for our last one here, and our hope is when we're done, our ending on this side matches about the same as the other side, and look how perfect we are, so we were right. So now we're just going to make an easy tie on each side. So I've folded that extra end in half, that leftover, so that the end of the twine meets our fabric. And just take both pieces together and then just tie it in a little knot so you have a loop. Going to do the same thing on the other side. The end of the twine is touching the fabric. Take both together, tie it in a knot. And then I'm just going to make sure before I tighten it that the, both loops are the same length. And they are. And that makes this project complete. So I hope you enjoyed all of these crafts today. You know the drill, everyone. I still haven't thought of anything new to ask. So leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite or let me know which project you want to make right now. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel to grow. And if you just walked in here for the first time, you know, you're checking things out or maybe you came over from Tracy's channel. If you're digging what you saw, Make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me and welcome to my channel. I had such a fun time joining in with my sweet friend Tracy today. Remember Country Charm by Tracy here on YouTube. Don't forget to check out her channel and video linked in my description box. Thank you again, Tracy, for joining me. I know we'll do it again soon. Before I go, I want to leave you with one final thought. Along our journey of life, it helps to focus our mind and concentrate on how Jesus is enough to carry us through. We know it, we are anchored in it, but sometimes our own voice tries to mend the situation itself because it's tangible, it's right there in front of us, and it needs an immediate solution. It's tough to wait sometimes, but His grace is sufficient to bring us the peace we need. So in order to get to the top of that mountain, we need to constantly take that deep breath in and release those worries right into the arms of Jesus. And through that release, we need to remember to praise God through it all. You see, by giving thanks and gratitude for whatever situation we are in, it helps to take our minds off the present and allow His presence to set us free from our anxieties, worries, and fears. 
It brings our focus to completion and all that He has for us. It allows our thoughts to rise up around His throne as His grace stills our rapid heartbeat of anxiety and brings it into the precise rhythm of His love for us. You must have faith in the one who can bring us through and stop the enemy's encampment of worry in our minds. The Bible says we are to cast all our anxieties on Him. Not just one anxiety, or maybe two, but all. So lift your eyes to the heavens and trust Him to guard your heart and mind with every ounce of love in His heart for you. So take your faith, let it be still, focus, and know that God will not hesitate to be there for you, with you, beside you, working everything together for His glory every single day of your life. He cares that much for you always. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.